Hey y'all, happy Monday. We're here to do the unit four day nine lesson. This is the last lesson of unit four, the last lesson of new material. So that means our test is getting pretty close. We're gonna have a test within the next few days, just so you can kind of get mentally prepared for it. But let's not worry about that. First, let's worry about unit nine. I mean, sorry, unit four, not nine, unit four, day nine. I'm gonna share my screen and then we will get started. Okay, so on this one, we're doing inequalities in one and two triangles. Now, let's just remember some terms right quick. So this inequality means greater than. This means less than. Remember, the less than almost looks like an L. Less than almost looks like an L. Now you see why I put lines through my angles, because these look like almost like the angle symbols I've been writing. But anyways, so we're going to look at, like I said, inequalities in one and two triangles. First, we'll deal with just one triangle. So let's look at our angle side relationships in triangles. In a triangle, this first theorem says that in a triangle, the larger angle is opposite of the longer side. So they give us, they tell us that AB is longer than BC. AB is longer, so that means the one across from it is our bigger angle. So our conclusion is that the measure of angle C must be greater than the measure of angle A. AB is bigger, angle C has to be bigger. Think of it like you're eating a hamburger. The bigger the burger, the more you got to open your mouth. And then the converse of that's true. The longer side is opposite of the larger angle. So we have our bigger angle. They tell us Z is greater. So Z is our bigger angle go across from it and there's our longer side. So XY is longer than what's across from Y? XZ. Okay, so they want us now, for this first example, to write the angles in order from smallest to largest. Well, first, let's, where's our smallest side? This is our smallest side down here. So our smallest angle then would be H. He goes first, so angle H is the smallest. Now, where's our medium side? There's the medium. If I go across from it, angle J is our medium angle. Think of it like we're ordering a burger. We want, do we want small, medium, or large? So we just found the medium, which means this is our large. 
So the one across from that one is G. So he's our large angle. He's the third angle. Okay, now they're flipping it on us. They're giving us angles and we have to get the name the sides from shortest to longest. Well, they only give me two angles, but what do I know about all the angles in a triangle? They add up to 180. So I have to do 54 plus 39. That gets me 93. And then do 180 minus 93 to get 87. So this angle right here is 87 degrees. Now, the shortest side is across from the smallest angle. Here's our smallest angle right here. I go across from it and this is, this is gonna be my short side. So how do I name that side? KM. Now let's look for the next smallest angle. The next smallest is 54. So I go across, there's my medium side. Which one's my medium? ML. And last but not least, I have my big kahuna. This 87 is my big one. It's across from my biggest side, which is LK. Okay, I know I went through that quick, but just if you need to pause it, go back, rewatch it. Do what you got to do. Okay, triangle inequality theorem. In order for three segments to reach each other and form a triangle, the sum of the smallest two need to be greater than the biggest two. So we have to have our small side plus the medium side, add those together and they've got to be bigger than our large. Small plus medium together have to be bigger than the large. Okay, so let's look at this next example. We have to say whether or not these can be sides. Well, first I gotta add my small and medium together. So, three plus five gives me eight. How does that compare to my big side? It's greater. So can this be a triangle? Yes. That works, so we're good. Now, let's look at the next one. Here's my small and medium side, so I'm gonna have to do four plus 6.5. That's gonna give me 10.5. How does it compare with 11? Which one's bigger? 11 is bigger. Ruh row raggy. Can we have a triangle if the large is bigger? 
No. And last but not least, again, pick our smallest two sides. Add them together. So three plus three is six. How does that compare to the six they give us? It's equal. Now, does my formula say anything about equal up here? No, it says greater than. So can these be a triangle? No, it has to be greater than. Okay, next example. The lengths of two sides of a triangle are six centimeters and 11 centimeters. Find the range of the possible lengths for the third side. Okay, now this one, it sounds complicated, but it's not. What we have to do is find the difference in these and their sum, and then X has to be in the middle. So 11 minus six gives you what? Five. Then we've got to do 11 plus six. What's that give you? 17. X is in the middle. So this part is the same every time. You will write it like this every time. The only thing that changes is your numbers. So don't, don't try to give me some wonky looking signs and they're flipped. No, just it's the same way every time. So Subtract, it goes on the left end, add, that goes on the right side, you're done. Put the X with your two signs in the middle and move on. That's all there is to this, subtract and add. Okay, on to the back. Once my text quits moving on me. Hang on, sorry guys. I'm having to fix some stuff. There we go. Okay, next one. So now we're gonna, we dealt with one triangle. Now let's do two triangles. So, Inequalities in two triangles is what we're going to be dealing with here. Let me fix this right quick because this is going to bother me. Insert. Symbol. Hang on. There we go. Where's the symbol? I need this. Okay, it's hang on with me. Hang on, guys. Let me find our triangle symbol. Okay. 
It's hiding somewhere. I just have to find it. I'll just go with this one. There we go. That looks better already. Okay, now we're back in business. So, two triangles with two sides congruent. If two triangles have two sides congruent, then the longest side is opposite of the larger angle. Okay, let's digest what that means here for a second. So, on these two triangles, they tell us that AB is congruent to DE and AC is congruent to DF. So since we have two sides that are congruent, we can actually compare angle D and angle A. They tell us A is bigger, A is greater. So that means BC has to be the bigger side over here. So we can conclude that BC is greater than EF because it's our bigger angle. We can make a similar argument going the reverse. So if two triangles have congruent sides, then the largest angle is opposite of the longest side. So they tell me, again, I've got two sides, two pairs of sides congruent. They tell me GH is longer. I can't spell longer, but they tell me it's longer. So that means the one across from it is my bigger angle. So angle J is greater than angle M. One of these days, I'll get it to work without moving my ink. Okay, so this next example, they ask us to compare the measure of angle PQS and the measure of angle RQS. 
So they want us to compare PQS, which is right here, PQS, this angle right here, with RQS. RQS is this angle right here. So I have to look across from them. Look that way and look that way. Which one is bigger? 5.3 is bigger. So that means PQS is my bigger angle. So I can say the measure of angle PQS is greater than the measure of angle RQS. So the bigger angle is across from the bigger side. Now they asked me to compare KL. So here's KL in pink. He's looking pretty in pink. And MN. MN is right here in green. So now if I look across from those, so boom and boom, which angle is greater? 57 is bigger. So that means this is my bigger side. So KL is less than MN. KL is smaller. Okay, C, ask us to find the range for the values of Z. Well, to do this, we have to look and see. They give us two angles here. Let's look across from those angles and see which one's the bigger side. Which one's bigger? 25 is bigger. So that means right off the bat that 6Z minus 3 has to be less than 45. Because 45 has to be the bigger angle. This side is bigger. So this angle has to be bigger. But now I can't just leave it like this. Can I have a negative angle? No. I can't have negative 20 degrees. So my angle has to be between 0 and 45. Now you may be looking at this and like, how do I solve that? Well, we gotta be like Oprah here. Or think of it like you have an equation with three different parts. Once you do the one, you have to do the all three. So if I wanna get this Z by itself, I would add three, but then I gotta do the same to all three pieces. So that's going to be 3 is less than. I'm just left with 6z in the middle, which is less than. 45 plus 3 is 48. Notice, you get a plus 3. You get a plus 3. Everybody gets plus 3s. Then I divide by 6. So this means three over six reduces to one half. I bring my sign down, bring my Z down. 48 divided by six is eight. So our range for Z is one, Z has to be between one half and eight.
Okay. Last one of the notes. They say the angle of the the angle of the swings in a circular swing rod change with the speed of the rod. Which rod is further from the base of the swing tower? So what they're asking about is which side here is bigger? That, that one? Or this one over here? Well, to do, answer that, we've got to see which angle is bigger, this angle or that angle. That one is our bigger angle. So this one would be further. So our answer here is rider B. Okay, so there are our notes. Answer the question on the form and then stay tuned for guided practice.